When working with printed circuit boards, you're primarily going to run into two types of transmission line traces, a microstrip and a strip line. Now a microstrip is also sometimes called an outer layer trace because it runs on the outside of your PCB, so you can run it on the top side or the bottom side of your printed circuit board. Now when you look at a microstrip, typically you have your copper trace and then you have some sort of dielectric material above your reference plane, whether it be a ground or power. You know, and this dielectric material, you know, is most often some type of FR4 material. And again, the top trace is normally exposed to air, but in reality, most of the time it's actually covered in solder mask, so it does have um, some different properties there. And then you can also even embed it, which is called an embedded microstrip where you put a little dielectric material over top of that. But what we're really going to talk about here today is your standard microstrip trace that has a solder mask covering over it, okay? And then when we compare that to a strip line, well, a strip line is sometimes called uh, an inner layer trace because it's buried inside between two layers, okay? So when you look at a strip line, you're going to have a dielectric material above it and then your reference plane and then a dielectric material below it and a reference plane. So your strip line, your, your your copper trace is sort of buried inside this um, homogeneous dielectric material. And what that does is it gives it constant, um, constant impedance and a constant propagation velocity. Now when you compare that to microstrip, the propagation velocity isn't constant because of the way the physical properties work of having it exposed to air or, or having a solder mask layer over it that has a different dielectric constant than your prepacked material that it's referenced to. So when you think about a microstrip, one of the advantages is you can route it on the top or the bottom without using vias. Um, you know, oftentimes that can be advantages if you don't want to have to deal with via stubs or different things like that. And when it comes to strip line, the advantage to using the strip line is because it's buried in the same dielectric material is that it allows you to not have to deal with certain types of crosstalk because of um, the way the dielectric constant and the, and the propagation velocity is, so it doesn't have as much crosstalk compared to a microstrip does. And also, just because of the way the etching process works, a strip line will typically have a more standard uh, rectangular or trapezoid shape, allowing you to have more repeatable and constant impedance, versus a microstrip where it's on the top layer and then you do your etching process, and if you ever look at 2D views of you know people who cut PCBs and use microstrips, um, microscopes to look at the microstrip trace. You'll see that it's not even really trapezoid. It's actually a, a much rougher shape. So you actually get a lot more difference in your impedance in your actual uh, PCB buildup with a microstrip and a strip line. And so those are just a couple of the differences uh, between a microstrip and a strip line and strip line trace. And the reality is, you know, there's a lot of people who say that you know you know, based on a certain type of interface or your frequency or, or your considerations, you can only use a microstrip or you can only, only use a strip line. And that's really not true. Now there are, again, there are some differences. You know, typically strip line gives you better, um, better crosstalk and jitter performance versus microstrip, and you don't have to deal with vias as much, but both types of transmission line traces can be used in any high-speed application. Certies, you know, multi-gigahertz interfaces, and they're fine. It's just that you really need to just know in the beginning what the differences are and account for them in your analysis and design. Thanks for joining me today for this Coffee Break video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you have any questions or feedback, or if you have a topic that you'd like me to discuss next time, send me an email at tim at signalbytestech.com. And be sure to join us online at signalbytestech.com. Sign up for our newsletter. Be notified of when we do another one of these videos. Now, I'm going to have another cup of coffee. And it's probably time for you to get back to work. I'll see you next time.